All right. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Um, for people that don't know you, do you want to introduce yourself? And how could people find your amazing channel and everything oh. else you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Shannon Q. I have a channel called Shannon Q. And I discuss the intersection between psychology and faith. And I also engage in complex conversations on that channel. I'm also one of the co-hosts of The Non Sequitur Show. And I'm Shan with two N's underscore Q zero on Twitter, but I wouldn't recommend following me there because that place is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why? Oh yeah, Twitter's just Twitter's not the place to engage in in great conversations. <laughs> Twitter's more of a firestorm. You know, I, I honestly think a lot of people say that, but I honestly think and a lot of people say that on Twitter people are more mean. Because they get to, you know, they're not seeing people in um, face to face or they're anonymous. I think people's true natures come out in Twitter. And I think that if you want to really exercise how to deal with the nastiest situations or the most aggressive and see if you could calm down the situation, I think Twitter is the best battleground to fight in. Uh, other than the fact that Twitter is being more trigger happy recently with, you know, removing p accounts. Other than that, I think it's a it's a great it's a great place to come out of your bubble. I mean, everybody doesn't like it because it doesn't feel nice to come out in the in the. I think that is the real world because people are like, oh, that's not the real world. And like, actually, that's more real than the real world because that's where people really true show without much filters what they're thinking. So you think it's more of like a microcosm? See, one of the reasons that I that the Twitter frustrates me is the character limit because I feel as though there, if if you're going, if you're in a complex dialogue with somebody, right. only having 260 characters to be able to succinctly. Uh, can you do the thread thing? One. You two. can do the thread thing. Yeah, you can do the thread thing. But by the time you finish writing that thread, seventy-five people have already responded to the first thing you wrote without the remainder of the content. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they would have done that anywhere else you posted it as well. That's well potentially true. That's why a, a <laughs> lot mean, of the least... text mediums are like that. I mean, I engage in a lot of conversation. It's a wonderful right. place. I will say this: it's right. a wonderful place to hone your skills right. when it comes to succinctly articulating your perspective on something. That right. I will say, but it's not always the best place to engage in dialogues. So there's always a lot of people jumping in too. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you're really looking to get it like in depth with right. somebody on what their perspective is and 47 other people are like, yeah, well, I think this. <laughs> it's not the best place to suss those types of things out. Right. And it's, it's also a good place to test an idea. Like sometimes I'm not sure if this is a, if what I'm saying makes sense or not. And I want to ask somebody, hey, what do you think? I'm like, let's just throw it on Twitter, see what people say. <laughs> You'll find out. You'll find out <laughs> right quick. <laughs> just throw it out there and people will point out every ridiculous, everything they find ridiculous about it. And you're like, oh, okay. Next time I'm going to change that part <laughs> or not. Um, but the main thing I wanted to talk to you about today um, was e exactly this, like how to have better conversations, right? And it seems to me, and tell me what you think. It seems to me that um, a, a lot of people on our side are getting more and more sensitive about what we should be talking about and what we are, shouldn't be talking about. And I actually want to criticize uh, something that you said as well in the live stream. I, I, wrote it down in the, I actually wrote it down in the live chat, and I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this, right? Okay, and, especially but they, me. Yeah, I'll hate but, you the most. <laughs> <laughs> but I and I know like as soon as I say this, people are not gonna a lot of people are not gonna bother about the explanation. I just go to okay, Armin, I guess you're on that are uh, one of those people. But one thing that people say, uh, people on our side say, for example, is that um this is not up for debate. Right? And it's what you said on the live stream that you had with um who was that? the AC, you know, Jamie from the ACA, the president of the ACA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't say this is enough for debate. I said their existence is enough for debate. The existence of transgender people. Yeah, their existence is, isn't up for debate. That's like saying that my existence is up for debate as far as I'm concerned. It's not really. I mean, you could debate it if you wanted to, but it's ridiculous. Well, yeah, that's a, see, that's different. 
it's ridiculous, but it's still up for debate. I mean, we're deba- we're going we're debating. Is it up for debate, or is it plaus? It, it's possible to have a debate about it, but that doesn't mean that the outcome. Like, are you going to debate whether or not math exists? Sure, you could debate whether or not math exists, or whether or not the English language exists. You could debate that, but it's but, it's ridiculous, though. Yeah, but but a lot of people believe a lot of ridiculous things. How mm-hmm. else are we going to change their opinions on it, other than debating them about it? That I do agree with. I, I don't think it's I, me and you agree on that. Right. So if somebody if somebody came into a forum and said trans people don't exist, mm. I would counter them. That well, that we that I would we counter debate. them. So, but I do, I don't think there existed. Perhaps I could find a way. Maybe you can help me find a way to word it differently. Then. Well, it's it's not just the wording. I think a lot of people mean it. A lot of people on our side think like, well, if you have gone, if you believe in this. Then mm-hmm. we're not going to even acknowledge your opinion by discussing it with you. You're too far gone. No, but- I think that's horrible. I think that's horrible because you're just writing those that person off as being incapable of changing their mind. And I've had horrible ideas and changed my mind. If somebody had just written me off, I would have just, I would have just stagnated in those horrible what? ideas. What horrible ideas? Sorry. <laughs> what horrible ideas? What like what? Oh well, I mean, I. There was a time in my life when I was I was religious and I believed that uh, you shouldn't be a homosexual, for example, that it was morally reprehensible. Mm. I think that's a horrible idea because it's amoral as far as I'm concerned. It's not a moral consideration. Right. But I, I, I managed to engage in conversations and meet people and get out of that. Right. Right. <laughs> but do you agree that there's a lot of people on our side that think that if somebody has views like that... This should just be ignored, you know, deplatformed, not associated with, not befriended, not talked to, um, you know, co- you know, it's just they just their mere existence should not be acknowledged. You Absolutely know what I mean? Not. No, but do you agree that? No, I I know that you don't believe that, but do you agree that a lot of people on our side are, you know, I mean, I've noticed it, it used to be just very fun to make fun of PC culture and all that. And now it's just too cringy to just keep repeating that. But it is starting to have a real impact in our own communities these mm-hmm. days. I feel like uh, even even just considering it, uh, even if think even if, if you're just playing devil's advocate, mm-hmm. or even if you say like, well, wait a minute, maybe this, what they're saying here, maybe it's right. And maybe you're wrong, but you're just, cons- you know, you're just examining it a little bit. It's enough for people to completely want to decide. So a lot of a lot of organizations that we cherish and love are now suffering. Like you, you, you experience one of it, but there's but this is a plague that is now harming a lot of them. I'm noticing it here, even in two um, organizations here in Vancouver. Right, mm-hmm. is being taken over by that kind of ideology. I was I was banned from Skeptic in the Pub for being an anti-Muslim bigot. Which is ridiculous, right? But but it is ridiculous. But it's but it's spreading. Mm-hmm. It's becoming more and more common. Even even though a lot of us f- on our side, like we recognize that it's ridiculous. It's that that recognition is not stopping it from from spreading. Don't you, is that not something that you feel like it's happening? It's it's dividing. It's I mean, div- it's 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 ruining a lot of movements and a lot of institutions and organizations that that have have done so much good in the past don't you think i think that you have to look at where it's people people are trying to protect people who are marginalized from further harm right so i think that they have sort of an ends justifies the means perspective they they see that as protection Mm. they see that as protecting the, those people not only from being exposed to views that are consistently harming them, but also from perpetuating those views because they see somebody like me or somebody like you engaging in a public dialogue, even though even though what we're doing is ardently countering these perspectives so that they can become less damaging, they see that as a potential for perpetuation. So if I'm engaging with a conversation with somebody who's incredibly bigoted and I have a large platform and that person had a smaller platform, they see that as me allowing this person my space 
and uh, exposing my audience to this person mm. and people who potentially didn't have those ideas are now exposed to them and they perpetuate because I'm mainstreaming them because they justify being countered and them justifying being countered gives them legs. Right. That's the way they look at it. And I can understand that perspective because I have the same end goal. My same end goal is to protect the same people, but I'm protecting those people to my mind by countering those arguments so that people can see that they're ridiculous, countering those perspectives so that people can see where they come from and choose not to hold them, change their minds because they realize that they're bad. Right. Um, so what, what would have, you say to, what, when you say you understand them, do you think they have, they make, they have a point in the, in the way that they're talking? Like if they, uh, when, when you you steal men their position, right? So right. how would you counter that that position that that's your Shannon, your method is not the good idea because you're actually giving them, you know, a platform? How would you respond to that? I think that the best way to do it is to talk about goals. That's what I try to do. I try to talk about because because people see the goals as being disparate. That people, especially when somebody has a platform, they see the goals as being disparate. They think that you're having a conversation with this person in order to get attention or in order to get more subscribers or in order to, to, to become more salacious so that people will pay attention to you like that. Those are the accusations that are leveled. That's not the case. Sometimes it might be the case. Sometimes it almost invariably might would be the case, right. but it's not always the case. So you have to have a conversation about goals and intentions mm. and but try to bring people in line with what your goals and intentions are. And that's not always easy. Sometimes that works. Mm. And sometimes those people are going to dig in their heels because they see what you do is damaging. But the thing is that I think what they're doing is damaging, even if they have good intentions. And I'm not actually um, convinced that they, a lot of them do have good intentions. I, I don't. I. But even the most dangerous ideologies that survive, even with the amount of damage that they caused, remain to survive were the ones that cause a harm in the name of a good intention, mm -hmm. right? The ones that they, not only the methods were damaging, but the intentions was also obviously evil, didn't survive that long. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that lasted and managed to cause more harm were the ones that the methods were wrong, but the intentions were, you know, looked pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, so, I understand. Yeah. So... But but I'm not even I'm not even sure if the intentions were good uh, good because I mean the, if the if the intention is to counter that kind of a narrative, we all know that the best way to counter that narrative that narrative is to talk to the people that have those opinions, right? Yeah, and change I mean, them that, up. I, yeah, and 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 this and this is coming from people that used most of them used to be religious and now they're not. So their mere existence is you know is proof that that works, right? Um, Another way is to show people examples. I like that. That's a, like, of, pe yeah. of people who have changed their minds. We like, have, we have, but they still don't, it, but I don't think this is why it doesn't work because the intention for them is not to counter this narrative. They, what do you think I, it is then? Signaling to their tribe that they belong to them. Oh, so you think it's very much an in-group, out-group thing? Yes. It's, 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 in fact, I think it has turned into a situation where not only they're not trying to counter and defeat the other side, they, they would prefer for it to increase in size and strength. It's kind of like the firefighter situation. I don't know if you know this, uh, but there is a, there, a lot of firefighters secretly hope for fire. Hmm. Right. And I think when to make themselves a hero in that situation, because I don't know or, why, but they're just looking forward for a fire to happen. Right. And it's just something that, you know, unintentionally might happen. Right. right. If your horror, if your if your life is defined by putting out fire. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think if you define your life by countering, for example, white supremacy, mm -hmm. then you might secretly want more of white supremacy and you're desperate for them to become more significant and bigger and again our own community is guilty of this as well um a lot of atheist activists want religion to be more damaging than it is 
In fact, right. a lot of them claim that it's the greatest evil that you could think of, which is ridiculous, right? Yeah. Um, and they want their religion to be uh, extremely damaging more than anywhere else where they live. Like a lot of them, if you say, oh, religion is more damaging in Saudi Arabia than the United States, they don't like that. They don't like that. And they, they either say, no, it's not as here as bad as over there. Like, look, at Republicans, blah, blah, blah. Or they would say, well, if the Republicans, for example, or the uh, Christians get a chance, they, they would make it as bad as Saudi Arabia, which is ridiculous. It, wouldn't, it, would, not, it would not become as bad as Saudi Arabia. But they, it's not enough for them to fight an evil. They want to fight the greatest evil. Right. right. Yeah. So they have to make it out. So from your perspective, they have to kind of make a mountain out of a molehill. Right. And and even though people are, you know, ostensibly on the same side as them and attempting to achieve the same goals as them, they even vilify those people. Right. Because see, I th there could be a component of that. But mm -hmm. the, I, I think underlying all of it is an, an imperative of of empathetic um and sympathetic morality and de and a desire to feel as though like it, it could still be tribalistic, but it could be mm. an imperative to protect people mm. as well. Like, don't you think that, that that must at least have something to do with it? Like that has to be a component, even well, if it's a self justification. Well, let me, let me give you an example, right? So when, when Muslims are attacked, mm -hmm in china how many of these you know people that are supposed to be fighting for muslims rights and humanist rights and stuff like that they talk about it they don't right mm -hmm. but when a, and when when a white supremacist in new zealand does it mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's all over their social feed even though what China, for example, is doing to Muslims is astronomically worse than um, what happened in New Zealand. Again, I'm not saying what happened in New Zealand. Again, people are going to say this in, in, uh, even if I explain it. What happened in New Zealand should have gotten all the attention that it got and even more. Right. I'm not saying that it shouldn't. Obviously, a, a tragedy like that should get attention. But you don't get near as much attention when you know if it's about protecting people why don't you see, why don't you see, don't you see the same amount of backlash when when china does it or when saudi arabia does it to because Muslims when it's Europe. somebody who looks like you and speaks the same language as you engaging in a behavior that you find morally reprehensible you're more identi you identify more with the perpetrator and you feel it more internally well, actually, no, I'm talking about people on our side that don't even look like the the white supremacists. Are they English speakers, though, for the most part, in Western countries? Hmm. So if, you they're think English, yes. if they're English speakers who are in Western countries, who are in countries that are, you know, more secular, where they consume media from each other's countries as well. Like Australian media is consumed in Western countries also. So you're more, you're more readily able to identify with those groups of people. So not only are you readily able to identify with somebody who is an attacker in that scenario and, and feel that dissonance about, oh my gosh, that's somebody like me who's done it. You're more readily capable of, identifying with the broader society and feel and feel as though it's more likely to happen at home where what? you are i mean and i'm not saying can't, that that's people okay can't, but right. that is i believe an abject fact you you think people can't identify that you know we're talking about concentration camps with a million muslims in there right i think people can and yeah i don't think i don't think you need to look like I don't think, I mean, I'm not saying you're justifying it, but I'm acknowledging that that's a very, I don't, you know, I don't think you need to look like Chinese people to understand that this is a human rights crisis, right? Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> right, right. I'm right. not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying from like a social psychology perspective, people are more apt to get outraged by somebody who's like them than by somebody who isn't. And they're, they're better able to disassociate it, it's it's actually it seems like it's only 
the re white regressive leftists that are more angry with people that look like them because everywhere else in the world is not like that. So if this is actually, yeah, if this is human psychology, then if I don't think it's human psychology because um, in Iran people are more angry from Arabs. Um, Arabs are more get are looked down more more down on Pakistani Muslims compared to Arab Muslims. Chinese people hate Japanese people. Japanese people hate Japanese people and Koreans. Um, Indian people. Um, upper caste Indians hate lower caste Indians. Uh, uh, having a dark skin in India is looked down upon, and people that have a darker skin, more darker skin than you, are are treated like shit. Um, so I think. Well, I'm not talking about that syst that systematic bigotry, oppression, no, and I'm I'm speaking more about selective outrage. Well, we're, I think we were talking in the context of selective outrage. Well, in, if you look at throughout history, selective outrage is usually reserved for people that don't look like you. Uh, what I think my my explanation of what's happening is that there's this is a new compared to all these older memes like bigotry, like racism, or you know xenophobia and religion uh, and nationalism. This this one, I think, this cult of woke. Um, ideology is a very new one and it's unique in history. I think the only time that we saw something similar, actually, I don't know if we have ever seen something anything similar, but I think it's mostly built around anti uh, colonialism, anti uh, di actually Genesis built in, you know, Nazi Germany, uh, and also the you know the empires of Europe and also what United States did to the natives. Um, again, specifically United States, South America, it doesn't matter. Uh, but it seems like it's, it's just as it's a new ideology with the Genesis and the devils have been defined and the saints have been defined and it doesn't ends justify the means. It doesn't really matter if you're making sense as long as you're, you have some, uh, Way there are some elements that you know how to identify who's in your group and who's outside of your group, and once you use those signals for you to identify who's outside of your group, you go at it. You go at them, no matter. It doesn't really matter what their position is or what their arguments are. It's just just a reaction to that, you know, out group, right? And I think the reason why you see, for example, if somebody uh, is attacking Muslims. If they are, it's the same thing, for example, with Muslims, right? Mm -hmm. Muslims also are not extremely outraged against China compared to how much they're outraged against Israel, for example, for the way they, you know, for what they do in Palestine. Again, not all. There are a lot of Muslims that talk about China, but relative to how much they talk about Israel, it's significantly less because they have defined their enemies and China is not an enemy that they yet recognize. Right, it's not built into the narratives, and and I think the cult of woke, one element of who's evil, is if they're white. That is one of the signals, even though they themselves are white, most of them, right? So, and I think they just stack up the, you know, they just the signals on who's uh, who's the who's the evil, who's the villain here. And they just decide based on that. And I think that's why they are. I think it's not about protecting the Muslims. I think it's more about, look, I'm doing what I'm supposed Look at me, my fellow tribes people. I am doing what I'm supposed to do. Please accept me. As really? Your. So you don't think that intrinsically, at base, they at least believe that their motivations are virtuous and that they're that maybe, they're maybe it's uh, maybe it's not very maybe they're not it's not very aware of what's happening i mean most people are not that aware of what's influencing their of what's motivating them yeah that's yeah i can i can understand that i mean most racist people don't think they're racist that's true well yeah well are you sure you don't belong to the cult of woke because i've heard that <laughs> I mean, I definitely think this is a problem on our side, yeah. because I am on. I'm not like criticizing. Because the, that is exactly something that has been leveled at me, and I've seen leveled at others. When you know, because you get to the point 
right. where you're accused of I being am- a bigot or being <laughs> racist or being transphobic or being homophobic. And then you're put in a position where you now have to prove that you are not. And there are certain standards that mm-hmm. you must adhere to and you must meet in order to be able to prove it. And they're almost impossible standards. Mm-hmm. Like you can't say, look at what I've done in the past. That's not really acceptable. You can't say, well, I belong to this group. That's not acceptable. You can't say, well, I, you know, I, I have affiliates, I have friends, I have compatriots who are members of this group who I confer with regarding these sorts of issues and consult with. That's not acceptable. You can't say, well, look at the things that I've done. <laughs> That's not acceptable because implicit bias trumps all mm-hmm. and everybody has it in, in inarguably all of us do like you like you just said you don't you don't a lot of people who are have racist tendencies don't realize they're racist or who are racist or who are bigoted in some manner right, don't but- realize that they are so that's almost like a trump card because no, 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 it's, it's, because- it's invariably true no, but they take it to the next level. Like they they use that in a way that it's not supposed to be used. They weaponize like, I, it, do you find, as opposed to using no, it as a conversation I, point? No, when I say when a lot of racist racist people don't realize they're racist, they take mm-hmm. that and they then they just see that as proof that whoever they think is racist then it's racist. That's what I'm no, saying. <laughs> no, but, but that's another that's another level that they're adding to it that I'm not right. right. They think like okay, so. Then I get to say, call anybody a racist, and if right. they say they're not a racist, well, because most racist people say they're not racist. No, that's a, that's an additional thing they're adding to it that I'm not adding to it. Just because <laughs> racist people, just because racist people do not realize that they're racist, does not follow that everybody that you accuse of racism and they deny it, they are racist. That's not. Uh, immediate you, how, what's the what's the defining line then because that's where it becomes really ambiguous right and you you have difficulties in these conversations right. and that's what's important that's what we're ultimately talking about if we're going to talk about what they're doing and how we condemn it mm-hmm. that's one thing but it countering doesn't... condemning and countering are two two very 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 important and very different things but this is why I don't make a judgment call on the person. I make it. We make a judgment call on every single claim, right? Mm-hmm. Because this is the people. You can never m- read the minds of every person, right? You can make sure. guesses about what motivates a group of people, and you acknowledge it's a guess. But it doesn't matter if the person that you're talking to is a racist or not a racist. Whatever argument they're making, you take that argument and you just analyze it. And you just make an, you make a judgment call on that specific argument without mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what what that person is or is not. Right? right. And this is Whereas it becomes very important to us as uh, to attribute labels to people right. and then they have to and then once they have that label Everybody must pile on. They must be condemned. They must be ostracized. Right. End of story. Yeah. Right. And I, I know I'm going to take in. Be, a lot of people are going to take this. Do it, of, Armin. You're screwed. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> racist, <laughs> racist people sometimes make some good points about some things. <laughs> maybe, That's uh, going to be a sound clip. <laughs> maybe, not about, maybe not about race. But maybe they have another argument that was something else, right? <laughs> yeah, I kind of destroyed it. This is going to be taken out of context, isn't it? Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, okay. uh-huh. Yeah, that's going to okay. be a meme. <laughs> Armin <laughs> the meme. If, <laughs> racist if the racist person is talking about if he's countering anti-vaxxers. Right, yes. The racist person thinks that anti-vaxxers are ridiculous and they're dangerous and spins... Uh, act, does fundraising and activism to bring attention to why vaccines are important, right? right. Are we going to dismiss all of that because this person is racist? Let's say another person that are actually... Are we going to embrace them even though they are? Would be the counter-argument? Embrace them or not. We'd just be like, we could support, we could counter them in one thing and support them in something else. Again, people are, you know, you don't have to take the whole pack. It doesn't matter what that individual is. It is it matters what those positions are but if you support them in that position and that elevates them to a higher status and they happen to hold really 
just overtly racist positions, but they've become popular and yeah. come to the forefront because people like us have said, you know, your position on, on anti-vax is amazing. I want to make sure that you're on my platform so that everybody can hear you talk about how shitty anti-vax is mm -hmm. and you make really good points. They become, you know, internet famous for that reason. And everybody starts to have respect for them as an individual for that reason. And then they're like, also, black people are the worst. <laughs> you helped to bring them to a point where they have a wider okay. audience of people that respect them. By that standard, by that standard, we can never support any Christian or Muslim ever. Whatever, whatever good claims they make. Because, I don't know, if, have you read this book, the Quran? Or, I've only read some, sir. It's not all right. This is, this is a book that, uh, it, you know, endorses slavery. Okay. Mm -hmm. So does the Bible. Yeah. And rape. Right. Yeah. Uh, taking women as sex slaves in war as, as war booty and, oh, um, gosh. wife beating as, as a way to, um, make, if you fear or disobedient from your wives, you know, beating your wife is not only, Permitted is actually commanded as long as you take the first two steps. Uh, torture, again, of unbelievers for eternity, um, both the Bible and the Quran. And so if you, if a Muslim person comes and you're like, oh, Muslims, well, I know this, the, the Quran says that, but um, my Muslim friends don't believe that. And yes, they have their dumb excuses for why the Quran says that. But at least as he himself or she doesn't believe those, you know, come up with dumb excuses for why it's not in the Quran. But this is a good person. This person is supporting, LG this Muslim person is supporting LGBT. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, Shannon, she does. She is supporting LGBT. But now that you're elevating a Muslim, what you're doing is you're bringing and celebrating Muslims and putting them in a position where it legitimizes the Quran um, or Christianity, the Bible. And basically what you're doing is making uh, belief in the Quran or belief in the Bible, which is anti-gay, anti-woman, anti-science, anti-human rights, pro-torture, pro-slavery. You're basically elevating that. So, given that they, these people are endorsing a book that endorses all this barbaric shit, even if they're good people and they're doing some good things, we shouldn't be supporting them or endorsing them. I understand, I understand that argument. Well, I don't that think that, by the way, just to be clear. <laughs> You have, so, you have so many stipulations every time you talk. <laughs> Poor <Yeah. Armin. laughs> Every time you talk, he's like, by the way, <laughs> the positions I'm stating aren't my actual position. Right, right. Right. <laughs> I understand that perspective as well. However, the argument could be made that that individual person, mm. even though they, they, they could see that entire book as allegorical and spiritual, and they and it's demonstrated by the fact that they don't hold their like the beliefs that they actually instantiate day to day and that they espouse to and that they live out in their life. Like the way they act is contrary to that. And you're elevating that person, not that book. That person just happens to b believe the the crux of that book. So there's ambiguity there. You have that admittedly so. Mm. So if a Muslim is a homophobe because of their belief in Islam. But they're also doing a lot of human rights activism, mm -hmm. bringing, you know, feeding the poor or whatever, right? right? You think we should like, no, fuck you, you're a homophobe, um, go fuck yourself. I don't think that you should interfere with them doing that. Mm. But I would, I would have hesitation with providing them my space to promote themselves as a, as a human rights advocate. But now, you, if they wanted to come on my channel and they they were a homophobe, for example, let's 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 juxtapose this. They're doing mm. lots of human rights stuff, but they're also overtly homophobic. Mm. I would not provide them my space to come and talk about what a wonderful human rights activist they are. I would invite them into my space so that I could counter their views on homosexuality. So that I could have a why debate. Can't you do with both at the, why can't you do both? 
Uh, I feel as what, well, what do you mean do both? Like elevate the fact that they do that as a portion of the conversation. I, it would be difficult for me if, my, if I'm inviting you on mm. specifically to have a conversation about that one topic and that one perspective that you have. I can understand that ha- how organically in that conversation, things that you do in your life may come up. Like, for example, I'm talking to you right now mm. that I do lots of things that you may not be aware of. Right. Some things that you are aware of that aren't coming up in this conversation because they're not relevant to the topic that we're discussing. Okay. So if I'm if, if I wouldn't invite him on just to be like, look what a fantastic person I am because I do all these wonderful things. If I was inviting that person on, I could potentially give a head nod to the fact that he's doing those things in order to to open a more honest dialogue and lay down the groundwork that okay, I'm not just here to attack you. I'm here to counter your positions. Mm. I, I can acknowledge the fact that you've done some good things and clearly that means that you you have an eye on being a good person and contributing to society. However, you have many ideas that are a serious problem and I'm certainly not going to platform you so that you can talk about how wonderful you are when I know that you actively hold positions that are in fact detrimental to people in society as well. But, but do you agree that people could be horrible and wonderful at the same time? Like yeah. And, okay. Well, so I think most people are. All right. So, but the thing exactly because most people are horrible about something. If that was our standard, if everyone's, if everyone's skeletons were completely out of the closet and if we knew everything about everybody, and this was our standard, then we wouldn't be able to work with almost anybody. That's true. Right? But I think that I think that where it comes in though is when there are people who are publicly espousing to having really shitty, detrimental, harmful positions, and those are those skeletons are already way the hell out of the closet. Right. In that instance. But does it? But why does it matter if it's inside the closet or outside the closet? We know that most people have shitty opinions on something. I'm pretty sure a lot of my views are extremely shitty. Right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the only pro- the only problem. Well, you did is- say that racists have good ideas. I heard you said. <laughs> Well, you agree on like, yeah, okay. Do you agree that if a racist person is fighting anti-vax, uh, anti-vax? No, I agree. I was just messing right, with you. Right. <laughs> no, but that's that's not one of them. That's actually one of the. But I, actually, I don't know which ones are one of them because uh, if I knew, I wouldn't be holding those ideas. I'm just saying we all have opinions that are absolutely ridiculous. We just don't know which ones because if we knew, we wouldn't be holding those opinions, right? Right. And if that was the standard, if our standard was like people with ridiculous backward ideas should not be, we shouldn't be working with them or elevating them or giving them a platform, nobody survives that standard. Nobody would survive that standard. Okay, that's fair. Right. I understand that because ev- like there's nobody that's entirely virtuous. There's absolutely nobody that's entirely virtuous. I mean, maybe me, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe me, <laughs> definitely not you. <laughs> I, <yeah. laughs> but, but, but I think that you need to look at it from a spectrum perspective though. Like there's a difference between somebody who spends all of their time on social media and in the public forum and on YouTube and on TV and in the town square espousing horrible ideas and and attempting to propagate them. Mm. Right. Like once, once somebody gets to the point that they're like, in the public attempting to propagate damaging ideas. Right, right. You, but, you have an obligation, I think, to counter yeah. them and, yeah. and not go, you know what, but he adopted a bunch of puppies. <laughs> no, so, okay. So what, 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 what I'm talking about is making changes. Right? Like, I'm not going to just celebrate somebody for the sake of celebrating them or supporting them for the so- sake of just mm-hmm. being equal, right? Like, but uh, what I'm saying is that yeah, I'm ch- to ch- to keep it balanced. No, what I'm talking about when you're doing activism, right? Um, if somebody, you know, in, in, is in line with you on a specific thing that you're working on, right? Like, I'm not just going to mention like what. Okay, so he has he you know has puppies. I don't care. Like, it doesn't really <laughs> it doesn't really help me out here, right? Like, but but if I'm if somebody is like if a Muslim person, for example, right, mm-hmm. is Helping me, for example, get somebody outside of Iran because they're ex-Muslim, an ex-Muslim atheist, Mm -hmm. that if she stays in Iran, she's going to get executed Mm -hmm. and we need to get her out of there. And this Muslim person, even though though he's a Muslim, 
he's supporting ex-Muslims, right? Because he thinks that people shouldn't be executed because they left Islam. And he's trying to help this atheist, even though he's a Muslim. And he's working with me on WhatsApp and on the phone, trying to get this person out, right? But yet, this let's say this Muslim doesn't believe in democracy, does it, is a homophobe, hates Arabs with passion, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, has a little bunch of other nasty stuff, right? I'm not, am I going to not work and advocates for it, like says it publicly on social media all the time, right? right. Am I not going to work with this person? Am I not going to support his activism when he's trying to get people outside of Iran when, they, when their lives are in danger? I am going to. I mean, of course. I, yeah, and and maybe I'll call him out on those other things if if that was the topic, right? But in this situation, I'm going to work with this person and I'm going to thank him yeah. for his, all his work, right? Right. And you're going to hope that the exposure to you and to the things that you do and I- increasing a relationship with him will help to shift his ideas at some or point, not. In time, potentially, or, or not, not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> because maybe, may, I mean, if, if that's a bonus. But, yeah. but, I, he, but, but at least he's helping he's you. He's saying that like this person is about to die and he's helping me, okay? Yeah, that is a very <laughs> specialized circumstance, though, Arvid. Like, you are coming <laughs> up with intensely extreme, like, that is a very, spe- like, someone's life is literally in the balance in that analogy. That's a real example. Oh, I know it's a real example. Okay. I right. understand. I very much understand that it's a real example. But when you're talking about, you know, this woke culture, they're not going after those people. Right. They're not they're not going after those people in those circumstances who are helping to save somebody's life. It's care. far more they, ambiguous. They don't care if they the people that I'm talking about, they don't care if they're doing anything or not. They they you already got some signals from them that they belong to the other tribe. You're out. You're out. Nothing else matters. You could cure cancer for all they care. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you 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 know, you just said like <laughs> There are only two genders, okay, and I cure cancer. Fuck yeah, like they would prefer that you know cancer stays because apparently if you cure cancer, okay. So if you say there are only two genders, right, oh. and cure cancer, they might wish that you didn't cure cancer because that's elevating your transphobia. <laughs> oh my god, Armin. <laughs> I that's 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 the standards that we're dealing with. I'm I'm okay. I'm serious. This, they wouldn't. They would be happy you cured cancer, but I don't oh, think that they would endorse you as a person. Let, let me give they you. They would ex- still want to acknowledge the fact that those are harmful ideas. I tell you, give me an example from my friends, right? But okay. from from within the atheist republic community, okay, which is very diverse, um, so diverse that I get outvoted voted on so many things. Uh, nothing goes my way anymore. <laughs> and, and here's an example of when something that didn't go my way. And again, as it's supposed to be a republic, I accept. Um, I posted a poll on Aces Republic, right, saying, "Do you think gender is, there is binary or is, or is a spectrum?" Okay, mm-hmm. I myself are am on the spectrum side, mm-hmm. right? But this poll caused a lot of people to abandon Atheist Republic within the a lot of people within the admin team. They they demanded the post to be deleted and it was because I was more, uh, you know I was outvoted and it's supposed to be a republic. I didn't see anything wrong with the poll. Um and I said that look the poll is not suggesting any position. It's just asking our followers what which side they're on. And the counter to that was like, no, because when you post this, it makes it seem like it's up for, this is a, up for debate, as if their opinion makes it what something fact. Like, no, because if, if, if that's what I thought, then I would think the poll, the poll has two options. So if you think a poll is suggesting that people's opinion makes something fact, then a poll with two options would suggest that there are two facts. Um, which which is ridiculous. The poll is just trying to understand what people in the community think. Like, and also they, I said that I don't seem to get this kind. Of, like, if I post another poll asking people if they believe in evolution, mm-hmm. I wouldn't get the same pushback. Uh, people would not think that I'm suggesting that people's lack of 
understanding of evolution is to just is endorsing creationism, right? If I post a poll and say, which one do you, which one, which side are you on? Evolution or creationism? Um, I mean, I wouldn't post it on an atheist page because that's a ridiculous question on an atheist page. But any like anything, if hey, do you think it's the the Earth is flat or it's a or is a globe? Like, do you think if I ask that p- question, am I suggesting that the flat Earthers have a point? You're missing a point there, though. Like you're miss you're missing a perspective. What's the perspective? The re- the rest of those things. Are an intrinsic part of somebody's identity. Okay, I was gonna go next, but go on. The the everything else you said, whether the earth is flat or round, those are beliefs that you hold. Everything else is a belief that you hold mm-hmm. that you can be convinced out of. Right. Any individual person can be convinced out of that belief if they hold that belief or otherwise. Right. The, the poll that you posted was saying this group of people that exists, are they valid or are they not valid? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's it. That's, that's exactly. That's, and and let's debate whether or not they're valid. Now, unless you have a point to doing that, mm-hmm. aside from bringing their existence up for debate, I had a point. Okay. What was the point? The point is to show that we have a problem in our community that um, a lot of people don't understand science, and I very effectively showed that. And I actually created a whole bunch of shows on with transgender activists. Um, so after, it was like after, a pulse check for you to find out yeah. that people in the community had a problem and yeah. that it should be addressed. Right, because I posted a whole bunch of other polls and I was happy with the results. Mm-hmm. I was happy, like, it seemed like, okay, most of our community are on the right side in this and the right side in this. And then when I posted that poll, I'm like, okay, we have a problem here that we need to be addressed. And as a result, as a response to that, we created a whole bunch of shows. And actually, as a response to those shows, now we know that our problem is actually a lot bigger than I thought. Like, we do have a transphobia problem in our community. Huge. Right? Yes. Huge. Right. But that was the point of the poll, <laughs> to show that. <laughs> okay? And also, the comment section on my, the shows that I made. But people didn't know that intent just from your posting the poll. Why? Does that okay? But here's the thing. Why and, does it matter? Because people imbue with t- in t- intent. Uh, That's uh, why it even, matters. But Should even they? No. I explained the no, intent. The, the demand was still to take it out. Okay. And as a response to people questioning your, you know, your existence or whether you have a right to exist, I do that with like I say, like, listen, I'm an ex-Muslim. Okay. Hmm. I have discussions. Friendly discussions, civil discussions with people that think I should be killed for being an ex-Muslim. Yeah. And they're and I'm asking them in the debate, why do you think it would be okay under an Islamic regime for me to be killed? And they are th- telling me why. Why they think I should be killed. Very friendly, very civil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to deal with that. <laughs> but <laughs> somebody tells but you that's how. topic. So I'm like, look, like because a lot of some trans right. By the way, a lot of it's interesting because the people that are anti this poll were more trans right activists than transgender themselves. Because a lot of transgender people, at least the ones that I'm friends with, they think like it's ridiculous for people to have a problem with this poll. It's mostly the guardians of those people. I don't know. That's fair, right? Yeah. A lot of so, people who are yelling, put trans voices, trans voices, trans voices. There should be trans voices. And you're like, okay, well, I talked to all of these trans people and they said this. And they're like, oh, those are, those are your token trans friends. I'm like, well, no, these are the people that I talked to because you asked me to go speak to, to trans people to get their opinion. <laughs> and I got their opinion. Right. And yeah. that's what they said. <laughs> but it contradicts you. Right. So, so you don't like it. it it's a, but the interesting thing is that if a transgender says something that they disagree with, they they're not, they're even the transgender people are, are kicked out of yes, the community. They're ousted. Yes. They're ousted. Yeah. Um and in fact, like in one of my discussions with a transgender transgender and trans right activist, uh, I convinced her like she was like, we cannot have transgender people that support Trump, for example. And I'm like but you're you're advocating for acceptance of transgender people. If you if if every like imagine if you're a transgender person and Trump supporter, you have no home. 
right? Yeah. Yes, okay, Trump, you're a Trump supporter. That's ridiculous. I don't understand why you're supporting Trump. But think, put yourself in the position of that person. Everybody hate the everybody in their community in the Trump supporting community hates you because you're a transgender. Well, not everybody, but most a lot of people on their mm. side. And you come here, and everybody hates you because you support Trump. Like if you want to, in if you want to create a community where some people don't feel demonized for being transgender, then accept this Trump supporting transgender person because they they probably need it the most, right? Yeah. Like you know, if you want to encourage people acceptance. Then, then do as you preach, right? This person disagrees with you. Accept them. Show them that it doesn't matter. If, I mean, it does matter. But you're still going to uh, provide a place where they don't feel attacked for them. Like, give them that. Anyways, but what, what, these, what these people come to me and they say is that, no, Army, you don't understand what it's like for somebody to deny your existence. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know how many calls that for my beheading are out there f- just for being an ex-Muslim? And I, and I debate these people. Like, uh, the people that want me kill is, killed is, is always an open invitation to them to come and talk to me. Especially, yeah, but, you, but you shouldn't extrapolate that out to other people's no, position, no. too. Like, that's your choice. You no, no, made that choice. I, not everybody should make, will make agree. that choice. Or not, okay, first of all, just one thing that is very unfair to transgender people is that they're all treated like transgender activists, right? Mm-hmm. Just because you're a transgender, that doesn't mean that you have to do anything, right? And a lot of people, when somebody comes and they're say, they find that they're transgender, they're like, well, explain to me this. They don't owe you an explanation, right? If, they're, mm-hmm. if they have identified themselves as an activist, as a spokesperson, then you may go and talk to them about transgender stuff but you don't go out to talk to cis people about their se- you know sex life without without the green light or their sexual or their sexual identity or their whatever or their so gender you, expression anything so you don't do that with transgender either right so i'm not i'm not saying you should do this i'm just saying don't demand that people that do want to have those conversations do want to give platform to people that they disagree with no matter how ridiculous and how out there it, it is I'm not saying you should do it, but don't kick out the people in your community that do go ahead and do that. Like, I don't because... disagree with that. Oh, okay. I, I agree with you on that. Okay. I agree with you on that. I don't think... <laughs> we're, we agree more than... We're just loudly agreeing with each other a lot. <laughs> you and I loudly agree a lot, Armin. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not being aggressive, am I? No. You're just, you're just really animated. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you you talk about everything with such vigor. It's fantastic. Another example, let me give you. I lost a friend because I said that I think I said I think gender is a spectrum, mm-hmm. but if I see scientific data that shows otherwise, mm-hmm. I will change my opinion. And they're like, "Why would you change your opinion? Gender is a spectrum." I'm like, "Yeah, I know. I'm agreeing with you. Okay, I'm just saying that I'm open to changing my opinion." based on science and they're like no you shouldn't change your opinion you should just ag- say that gen- you ha- should agree that gender is a spectrum i'm like listen we're atheist activists right you know what we tell theists we're like we don't believe in god but if one day you have proof for god we're gonna believe in god this is what we tell them well and we know they're never gonna have that proof but we tell them that if they ever come up with a proof, we'll switch size if they have scientific data. And this is exactly what I'm doing right now. Like, I tell people that say on, on the other side that are countering me on my, you know, tr- my trans right activism. They're like, oh, this is science. Well, like, you tell them, well, I haven't seen your science. Show me your science. And they don't show me the science. Okay. And like, well, I'm open to changing on your side if you show me your, the, the science that you're saying is there. And, and that's a good way for them to not see yeah. this fight and see this as a discussion, right? This and is a- it also encourages them to actually go investigate because now they have to try to prove their position. Exactly. As opposed to just sticking to the rhetoric. Right. And I also point out to them that here's the thing. If you, here's a tip on changing people on the other side. Take a few steps on, on your own side. You're like, look. We have science denier, deniers on our side as well, right? Yeah. We On our side, we have people that think there's no biological difference between sexes, okay? So we have our own fear of ridiculous people that deny science, okay? 
And then once you do say that, then like, but you guys have your own science deniers as well, like climate, um, you know, change deniers and and this stuff. And then like, this is when you say like, I'm a conservative atheist, and I think science says this. And like, why did like I tell them like, okay, but what did that to me? When you say that you're a conservative atheist, and then you say what science says, to me it shows that you're picking out what science says. Based on being a conservative. <laughs> oh, so you think it's like a confirmation bias where they're actively searching, affirming information instead of, which I, I think a really great position to always be in is actively seek out something that will counter the position that you currently hold. I think that the, the best way to strengthen your position is to seek out opposing perspectives right. and, 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 and check their validity against your existing perspective. Right. I, it, but what do you, okay so what do you, another thing that uh, what do you think by the way this transgender stuff is becoming the main the new battleground i think right i think we have done a very good job still a long way to go again every time i said we have made a lot of progress people are like oh you think everything is solved no and um, no of course not and, but at least in north america and in europe we have done a lot very well in normalizing gay rights right or gay relationship transgender now is trans rights turn to shine and i think this whole woke cult is ruining that i think especially with generation z they're alienating allies yes they're alienating allies and the trans and telling them that they aren't even allies to begin with right right <laughs> but but i think like trans right is going to suffer because because the gay rights movement didn't have this nonsense in it. This kind or of nonsense. perhaps it didn't, we just weren't aware of it because we exist in a microchasm. That's not necessarily apparent to everybody because we are on the we are boots on the ground and on no, the no, front look line. At, look at the history look at the history of gay rights activism. They talked it they, they they get talked and gave platform to the nastiest people. They went to they went and confronted the the, the greatest opposition. They they normalized it by 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 talking about it, you know. I agree uh, with that, but we're talking about the woke culture thing, though. Like the counter, like the, oh. we're, you're talking. I was speaking in reference to what we're talking about here, which is specifically the pushback against people who who at, attempt to be and purport to be allies mm. and want to champion these causes, who are being told not only are you not an ally, you are so far off on the other side that you're you are in fact an enemy just because you don't specifically take the same tack that I do right. in this particular battle now we feel that i think more readily because we like i said we are boots on the ground and we are on the front lines attempting to do this mm. so when you say that they didn't have this when gay rights came about we we can't equivocally say that because you know, multiple years ago when this happened, A, the social media spectrum wasn't what it is now, and B, right. we weren't there to know yeah, what it's like to be somebody like us. But we talked to the the vets of those movements. I mean, what, what I'm saying is that women rights, gay rights, mm -hmm. um, you know, minority rights, these were great movements, and they 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 accomplished so much Mm -hmm. And they were so successful that now the fact that they're celebrated, the people that supposed to belong to these camps are now using it for a different goal because because it produced a lot of heroes. Right. Now people want those badges of being the heroes. So they just go and mimic the the same vocabulary, the same phrases, the same signals without the actual goal. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's a, again, it's about signaling rather than achieving changes. So what the gay rights was what the gay rights was about was normalizing, you know, being gay, mm -hmm. not about you know achieving points among other. Not gay about proving who was homophobic. Right, you're right. It, it wasn't about well. You, the reason why it wasn't as bad as this is because your your tribe wasn't really there. It wasn't that big of a tribe for you to even be be so proud of, you know, becoming. The social media celebrity. sphere wasn't the same either. Like the social media sphere wasn't. I mean, I, 
I think it would have been faster if we had social media. I just think that be- what every tribe, it, it, every movement, when it becomes big enough, at some point, there are people that are just going to try to become the heroes in it without actually doing the work that makes a difference. Right. Right. Yeah, and then they they can become cannibalistic too. Like right. just, because I, if, if you're not if you don't meet that ridiculous standard that they right. set, that's a, that's a constantly moving bar. Then which is which is which is a you're out. You're an enemy. You should be attacked. You're canceled. And the interesting thing is that one the people that are making a difference are the ones that the first ones that are kicked out, right? Mm-hmm. So what's the solution? <laughs> <laughs> I think you and I are having a conversation right now about trans rights. And I think that more people should be ha- putting, not just countering the people that have the shitty opinions, but elevating the people that it pertains to mm. is important. Having people who are trans come and not only just talk about their stories, but just exist in the spheres that we exist in, in the way that we do. Doing the things that we doing the things that we do, the like advocating for causes that they care about, not because they're trans, but because they're causes that they care about. Can I give you my solution? Sure. I think we should normalize disagreements. That's fair too. Because I think people don't know how to get along with people that they fundamentally disagree with, and and if you think that normalizing disagreements is is normalizing the views that they have, that's not the case, because the more you normalize disagreements, the more people will feel that they could have a discussion about these disagreements. In fact, normalizing disagreements is the best way to tackle the opinions that they're having. I think this hostility towards people that hold a different position than, than you needs to be challenged. And I think this is an important fight for all Rights act all forms of uh, movements and act uh, uh, you know activities because um, if we this is this will take you know if if you if you're not willing to have a conversation with people that you're supposed to f- be fighting against then you're not making a difference you're not okay? I agree with that that's right. literally what I do <laughs> <laughs> right so I think the way the best way to normalize disagreements is to bring give a platform to the most extremes most extreme okay right like i'm talking and not, about, not, not give a platform i'm assuming you mean uh, have discussions and counter yeah, not just be a, like here's the microphone <laughs> <laughs> tell everybody all your shitty ideas <laughs> okay. give a platform i'll stand over here and tell me when you're done <laughs> no no give a platform to counter okay yeah no, because no. If, if you think that these people are just gonna oh like, by the way the more you remove a platform for these people, do you? The more you actually, then that's not going to stop them. I, that's the, yeah. They, people don't disappear just because you close your eyes. Right, right. Or don't you plug think, your ears. <laughs> yeah, that's actually they're growing. The, the, every time you do that, they actually become bigger. Right, like you know, every time you remove somebody from you know somewhere. It's just going to backfire. It just always has. I don't know why it never, people never learn, right? The only solution is to ta- tackle those ideas. The only, that's the only solution. And also not to attack them personally. And I to help also- elevate other people who are attacking the ideas. Like, not to vilify the people who are. <laughs> right. I, by the way, I, I, I sometimes fail as well because I'm pretty sure as soon as I said that somebody's going to go find a clip where I failed at this. I'm pretty sure. Yes, I'm. I know I fail at this as well. I sometimes get personal, especially with, especially when people are actually endorsing violence, like openly. I lose my shit. But that's you know. So, but I'm just saying that. No, there's no. Go talk to ex Nazis. Okay. Ask them why they changed their opinions. Well, ask them, did they change their opinions because somebody throwed something at them and told them to drop dead Nazi scum? Was that the moment that they like... Or just completely ignore them. And or just completely ignore just them. Just let them go back to the other Nazis and talk about right. If you talk stuff. To them, if you talk to them, they will say, somebody took the time and listened to what I had to say and then responded and they took me seriously and they, they told me why I was wrong. And that's that person, they always have a story. 
Not always. They, a lot of the times they have a story and they're like, this was this one time that one guy just said this one thing and it made me think. Right? I right. mean, if we, we have ISIS members that are now atheists, people that were almost joining ISIS and that they're now atheists. If we could get that level of change just by conversation, what people think, it, it, it's interesting because the people on the world cult, when you, t- you tell them like, oh, is it possible for radical Muslims to be to abandon their ideas, they, they're more open to that than a white supremacist changing their opinions. You know, yeah. if you, it, it, white, forget white supremacists, just one tweet about something somewhere that uh, just rubbed them the wrong way. <laughs> like that's, that's all you need for you to be abandoned forever. And no matter what you do, it's, it, it's not good enough. I don't know. By the way, I, I think this is going to die out. I just, I just hope it dies out fast. I, I compare it to uh, the Red Scare mm-hmm. because a lot of people think I, I want to l- let me know what you think because as much as I criticize the world cult, I don't want to exaggerate how big of a problem it is mm-hmm. because we had it worse. The The Red Scare in the United States was very similar to this. There were people just being accusing everybody that said that met that just McCarthy hearings, yeah, right. Every, like you just you were at that meeting. There's a picture of you that you were at that meeting at this time. You're a communist. Oh, you said something. Oh, you're you're part of a union, communist. That you know anything just you know anything slightly that. Uh, w- that was made you look like a communist or sound like a communist, and you had the you had the government involved. Like it was like now at least it's just the social media and YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. The government is not arresting people for just mere accusation of Nazism, right? Right. But we had the government actually arresting people for mere accusations of communism. So if we had it, and now we look back at it, we're like, oh, that was ridiculous. And the the threat of sorry, the threat of communism was exaggerated. Right, communism. What again? It's very similar to what we have right now because Nazism is a, is bad, but there is not as big of a threat. Or white supremacy is not as big of a threat right now in our world today as these people making it to, sound to be. It's not okay. Yes, it's there. It's a problem, but it's not the big as big of a problem as they think it is. It's a fringe group. And the only reason why they're growing right now is because this woke cult is make, give, making them significant. They're loving it. Shannon, they, they're loving it. They're, 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 the white supremacists, they're in love with this woke cult because they only have to put an OK sign somewhere and announce it as a Nazi symbol. And all of a sudden now they, they, these regressive leftists, they just do the rest for them. Like they just, they just, they just have to be four people just deciding something on 4chan and they will take all over the news for them. It doesn't matter how small they are. They become they have become so significant. They can't believe how much power they have over the media because of these reactionary sensitive people. They are even though they're small, they're becoming more significant because of this kind of reactionary attitude these people have. And and the the woke call, they love them as well because they want more white supremacists to be out there because their entire existence depends on them. They're in love with each other. They have a love-hate relationship with each other. A parasitic, <laughs> symbiotic, parasitic relationship. Right. Well, but to play devil's advocate, they may say that the reason that those same supremacists are getting more attention is because people like you and I are, you know, having arguments with them and countering them publicly. And that brings them to... See, that, that's what gets me, though. Like, I can't even play devil's advocate anymore because it frustrates me. Because um, somebody like me, I'll use just myself. I won't, I won't bring you into this. Somebody like me will, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily know if I'd go against a white supremacist just because I don't feel equipped. But I certainly wouldn't, but wouldn't knock somebody else for doing it. But I would definitely 100% go against somebody who's homophobic or somebody who's misogynistic 100% of the time. Yeah. But they'll tell me that it's because I went against that person that they're getting attention. However, that stream that I did, for example, or that or that Twitter engagement that I had is only getting a butt ton of attention because they're retweeting it and they're sharing it and they're talking about how everybody should be outraged about the fact that I even talked to this person to begin with. Mm. And 
they're sharing it amongst themselves and convincing other people to be pissed off at me and people like me for doing it. And that's garnering it more attention. Right, right, right. That's throwing more attention at it. Whereas it would have just been a stream that I did, like any number of streams that I do. I sometimes do three or four a week. Sometimes I only do at least one I usually do a week, if not two to four. Right. Most of them just pass. Right. But one like that, and and in some instances, those streams may change a person's mind. I've had streams that I t that took place that they did change a person's mind. I can absolutely demonstrate that either the person that I was speaking to or somebody that followed them or somebody that was listening changed their mind as a result of those conversations. But the conversation that they're pissed off that, p that happened, they're the ones throwing attention at it. Right. So, so what you're saying proves that... They're like, that don't they look at this thing. <laughs> right. Here it is. Don't look at it. Like, so... Please. So, so what you're saying sh shows to me, like in, as another example of many other examples, that the people that are thinking that we are the people that giving them power are actually the people that are giving, because this works on them too. Because when you go around and say like, this is bad, this is bad, you shouldn't look at this, this should be deplatformed, this, this account should be banned, you are the ones that are making them more relevant. So they are actually responsible for what they are accusing us of. I had a okay, so I I went and talked to actual Nazis, like self I know. identifying Nazis. It took YouTube minutes to take it down. Okay, minutes. And again, this is going to be taken out of context. To be <laughs> fair, to be fair to those Nazis, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the sound clips that are going to come out of this. <laughs> they. They to be fair to those Nazis, some <laughs> racists have good points. <laughs> they never said, at least in that discussion, again, they were, they, they, I'm not endorsing anything they said, but they, in that video specifically, I'm not saying they don't advocate for violence, but in that video specifically, they didn't advocate for violence. But I had another video with a Muslim that was explaining to me why it's okay to throw gay people and you know, to kill gay people why it's okay to beat your wife why is it okay to have sex with a nine-year-old and why it's okay to kill ex-muslims he was c explaining all these to me and youtube was like yeah no, whatever like mo not only it's not removed monetized okay so okay but to me it shows like it's not about the what's being said it's about this signal this is what we're supposed like this woke culture is like this is part of the enemy. This is an enemy that we don't recognize. Even if they're saying horrible shit, they're Muslim, okay? And but, they see Muslims as an, an additionally marginalized group that has bigotry against them and needs protection, so they, they expand their umbrella over Muslims as well. Right. Regardless of their ideas, because they're also marginalized and discriminated against. So they get to be held under that umbrella, whereas... Yeah. Nazis are separate, right? So that extends, but, like, you, but but, that, that's the logic that that follows. And the interesting thing to me is, like, if you look at world harm, it's not about the ideas; it's about who you are. And it's the, not about the harm either, because right. no, I agree. Yeah, show me, show me how many Nazi governments do we have right now, Shannon? I I believe the answer is zero. Zero. How many <laughs> Islamic theocracies do we have? More than zero, right? More than zero. Right. More than zero. Yeah. <laughs> Nazis are out there right now killing people with, you know, beheading people and cutting off their hands or bloggers or people that are writing against them, you know, killing them in the streets and po bragging about it online. How many Nazis are doing that right now? That I'm aware of none, but there's pro there could be a couple. There could be a couple, but that I'm aware of none. Now. There's none right now. I'm not, again, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's not a problem, but relative to, you know, I'm, again, I'm not trying to say like you shouldn't talk about it. You shouldn't fight against it. Okay, you should. Even though we have defeated, you know, these ideas a lot, you should still hold your ground. It's good to have not let these ideas come back, right? Mm -hmm. But the outrage is not is this is not proportional to the harm, right? The outrage is not proportional, and even even the mere suggestion that the outrage is not proportional makes us not the apologists. That's what it does. According to them. By the way, on a side note, a lot of Nazis were angry with me because they thought these Nazis that we talked to were, you know, insane. 
and they thought that they're making Nazis look bad. <laughs> so, That's an amazing sentence. <laughs> right? so, the Nazis were mad <laughs> because the Nazis that you talked to were 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 too crazy. <laughs> you needed to talk to more moderate Nazis. <laughs> But they said, like, they're not making good arguments and they believe in a lot of, you know... Oh, they weren't representing them well. They weren't articulate enough Nazis. Right. <laughs> I mean, okay, so Jesus actually, he- here's another thing that's going to be taken out of context. I kind of feel felt bad for the Nazis that I was talking to. <laughs> because, because, Shannon, they were, they, were, they were insane. Like, they were, like, it's not, <laughs> it's not that they were bad people. I think they just had some... I mean, I'm not an expert, so I can't know, but it really looked like they had some mental issues, right? Yeah, I mean, the ones that I certainly had some social issues, for sure. Right, some like, social like this guy, like, I, okay, so, so t- tell me this, okay, t- what do you think about this person? I, the Nazi that I talked to, right? Mm-hmm. First of all, he believes in every, every conspiracy under the sun, right? Like, he feeling moon landing fake, reptile people real, um, you Blood know. Earth. I don't actually know. He said that was one step too far. <laughs> <laughs> that was his line. <laughs> That's fine. Fair enough. <laughs> but but um, he thinks like oh my god. I don't know. I think I don't know. Maybe I should cut out this part because this is gonna not be. YouTube is not gonna tolerate this. YouTube's not probably gonna tolerate. <laughs> this is my thing. This is my thing. I I I stick with my principles. Right? I stick with my principles. Somebody can call me as many names as they want. They won't manipulate me into abandoning my principles. They can say that I'm a transphobe apologist. They can say that I'm a racist apologist. They can say that I'm a homophobe apologist. They can say whatever they want about me. But what I'm going to do is demonstrate the contrary. And anybody that's paying attention isn't going to believe their rhetoric because they're going to see that I demonstrate the contrary. I don't stoop. You shouldn't stoop. You shouldn't stoop to going, yeah, well, I'm not, so fuck you. Right. That's when when you go down to that level, when you go down to, yeah, well, fuck you for doing this, mm. and also screw you, and it's more important that I defend myself than I talk about the issues, then it becomes an argument between two personalities, and you're not talking about the issues anymore. I just say, I understand your opinion, I understand your perspective, I understand what your goals are, however, this is my perspective, and I'm going to continue along the path that I'm already on, because right. I know who I am, and I don't need you to tell me, and I don't need to prove it to you. Right, but but do you agree that I the part that we that I'm going to cut out? I'm going to leave the part that your response to it, but not what the, what we actually said. But do you agree that that's something that if I put out there, like it wouldn't survive on YouTube? It wouldn't no, survive. No, demonetized right away. And it, even and not, demo- not demonetized, and I would be completely down. banned from yes. the entire platform. Yes. But it's something that is also objectively true. Yes. Right. I agree. So this is a problem that we're dealing with right now because, like, there's objectively true things that we cannot say. Yeah, and we're not going to fix that today. (laughs) We're not going to fix that today, Ehrman. But if people like you and me continue to push back against it and have the conversations and prove that they're effective and prove that they can mediate change Mm. and garner a following where more people realize that's effective and want to join movements like ours where having conversations that to counter these perspectives right it is a is a best course of action right right then then we can then we can make that type of change just bitching about it isn't going to make that change we're going to do something about it yeah that's what and and are you hopeful Yes, absolutely. I get emails all the time. I'm sure you do too. Yeah, but this all private. None of them can be like open, open about a lot of these things. But I don't he- care if it's open or not because I know. But, I know. I don't right. care. I don't need. I don't need you know, accolades. Sure, I just, you know, just want to know that it's. I just want to know that it's working. You know why I'm so sensitive about this? Um, because. I came from a place where there were certain things. I, I by the way, I was born in Iran. Um, and I used to be a Muslim, and now I'm an ex-Muslim. And so I come from an environment where there are certain things that you just don't say, right? You just don't say these things 
right? And I was like, fuck that. And I said those things, not publicly, but to a lot of people. But I was frustrated that I can't, why can't I say these things when I was ex-Muslim, when I was an atheist in Iran? But then when I came to Canada and then was like, I can say whatever I want now. There is no limits. There is no limits. Everything can be said. This is fantastic. But now we know that there are some limits, right? But not, not, it's not the same. I understand that. Nobody's going to come and arrest me because of what I said. Nobody's going to put me in jail or execute me. So I'm not saying... A lot of people are like, oh, it's not comparable. It's I'm, apples and oranges. I'm like, well, I can compare apples with oranges with you. Right? It's, I prefer apples over oranges because That's there's no... That's objectively wrong, but okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? Like everything is comparable. Just because you're comparing two things, you're not saying that they're the same, right? Um, but yeah, it is comparable, uh, but it's not the same. I understand that it's way worse, but I'm just saying it's. I don't. The reason why this is a battle that I want to fight is because there shouldn't be limits to what you can say, and and I'm I'm hopeful as well, like, especially because when I study the Red Scare, because it was way worse than this. And we came out of it, and I mean, United States came out of it, and people look back at it and were like, "Well, that was ridiculous." And it's so similar. They they saw a threat. It was a threat. It they it was perceived much to be like now when we analyze the Soviet Union at that time, they were never in a position to destroy United States. Like the 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 understanding was that you know you know United the Soviet unions have spies everywhere. And you know the Western civilizations are under a threat, and they will they will conquer us if we're not careful. We need to find them wherever they are. Spies, anybody could be a spy. But now that we look at it, the, the position that the Soviet Union was at that point, they were never in a position to be a threat to the United States, right? And the another, another interesting side effect, which is similar to right now, is the actual you know the Soviet Union did have spies in the United States, and they benefited from the Red Scare. Because they went under the radar because of all everybody being accused of being a spy, they the provided them the cover to do whatever they wanted to do. And it's very similar to what we have right now. Because the people that are benefiting from this hysteria, from all these accusations of racism and everything, that are the racists, are the white supremacists. Because <laughs> like so I, I actually like mentioned, oh, this person is a racist. Um, you know, you're being racist, and he was like saying really racist shit. And it was like, well, everybody is a racist these days. I'm like, shit, but you, <laughs> but this is, <laughs> but what you just said is objectively racist. You're act, you're, you know, but they're using the lines that we use because now they, they they know what to say. Like now, when you actually say something is actually racist, which is racist, the person that said it will. Well, everything you say is racist these days, and they right. they they benefit because from the this. The bar gets lowered so much to just implicit bias, and everything gets labeled as racist. So people, or or homophobic, or transphobic. So people who legitimately hold intensely damaging, overtly damaging beliefs are like, well, so are you? Because like you, you, I'm sure you have some sort of bias implicitly, and thus you and I are the same, even though you couldn't be farther from the truth. And the new people that are discovering what they want to believe in, mm -hmm. when they say something out of line and they get accused of being alt right or racist or white supremacist, then they go look. Okay, I guess those are my people. Let's meet. Let me go find my people. Then if everybody is saying those are like the, the new generation, the generation Z and people, if you keep telling him this is racist and you want to hold on to s things that are not racist, but you think it's fact, you're basically mm -hmm. telling them what tribe they belong to. And you're basically gifting them to that tribe. That's what yep. you're doing. Instead of saying, okay, well, I have some issues with some of your perspectives, right. but you know, let's talk about it. Let's, let's you and I have a discussion and I can explain where we differ here and maybe we can come to a better understanding. Let's work with each other. It's like, you're labeled, you're gone, you're yep. canceled, go over there. Those are your people. Okay, this See is a problem. We agree too much. I was hoping that we disagree more so we could have an. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll find something else. <laughs> we can fight later. <laughs> keep watching. I'm going to find something that. that <laughs> you want to fight with me so bad? 
work. You kept on agreeing with me. <laughs> I know. I'm unfortunately reasonable. It's tragic. <laughs> maybe I'll find, oh, maybe one day uh, find something I said that was ridiculous and put, you know, tell I'll me that. Start making a list. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> okay, good. Um, all right, so let's stop here. It's been an hour and uh, 26 minutes, oh, I think. Yeah, I've got to go on non sex show actually in 30 minutes. So that okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll edit some parts out and then I'll put this and I'll send it to you. Um, but it, but it, it's really fun talking to you. I know you were tired today, so thank you so much for. No, take- I was looking forward. I always enjoy talking to you, Armin. You and I always have a really spirited discussions, and those are my favorite. Right. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Even though you're friends with Drew, I'll allow it. <laughs> I'll still affiliate with you <laughs> against my better judgment. <laughs> I won't hold that against you, but that's fine. <laughs> Shut it. Drew Genetical Man of High Skeptic, go check it out. Uh, also, you, your channel again, your Twitter channel. Oh, you... my channel's called Shannon Q because Shan- I'm not even remotely creative. And <laughs> uh, my Twitter is Shan underscore Q zero with two N's. And what, what do you again talk about on your channel for people? Uh, I talk okay. about the intersection of psychology and faith, and I also engage in complex conversations. So I find somebody whose views are diametrically opposed to mine, and I have them on so that we can have discussions about where we differ. Awesome. That's great. Okay, go check that out. And thank you so much for, for being here again. Thanks, Armin. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.